Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, today's talk will be about the precision time uh, protocol and its implementation is Zephyr. So first let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Adam Wojasiński, I'm a software engineer at uh, Baylibre. It's a, a consulting company specializing in uh, Linux kernel, uh, Yocto, uh, you boot, uh, Zephyr, and everything uh, embedded related, you name it. And in today's presentation, I will try to answer the question, why do we need precise time? Mm, say a few words about the PTB, what it is, uh, go through the protocol, uh, show a few most important things, then go through implementation details and say a few words about the next steps. So moving on, uh, what is the, uh, why do we need uh, precise time? So in distributed uh, systems where we have a small variation in clock, in clock frequencies, uh, over the time uh, those differences can build up to some significant uh, differences and that might impact our uh, safety critical uh, systems uh, or some ordering of uh, events. Uh, precise time is also needed in some motion control systems or in, I don't know, uh, audio uh, applications and so on. So what exactly is PTP? It's a, a local network uh, protocol used to synchronize uh, time across uh, devices and it is described in IEEE uh, 1588 standard. It's more versatile than a GPTP, it, which is a subset of a PTP. Uh, compared to a PTP, uh, it works on, lever, lay, on layer two, whereas PTP works on layer four. It uh, gets better precision than network time protocol. Uh, it's around a microsecond precision compared to a few milliseconds. And it also supports uh, multiple transport protocols. So uh, how is it really looks like? So it is a self-organizing uh, network. That means that each uh, instance of a PTP device runs its own uh, decision algorithm and decides whether it should become a source of the time or a receiver. And we can differentiate uh, three main categories of devices. One is ordinary clock that has only one port, so it can be receiver or grandmaster. Boundary clock that has multiple ports and can become a master for uh, one port and a receiver for other. And we have also transparent clock, which uh, is for forwarding packets with a compensation for residency time inside it. So how does it the clock synchronization look like? Uh, we have uh, two possible ways of uh, uh, forwarding the uh, timestamp information. Either it can be one step mode where hardware needs to support that and include the timestamp information on the fly in the packet, or we can have two-step mode where we need follow-up messages containing a uh, first timestamp. Uh, after those two messages, we have also uh, messages used to uh, compute the delay. And here you can see two equations that are used for uh, calculating the delay and offset of the receiver. And when we have a scenario with the transparent clock, you can see that there is a residency time that is uh, then uh, put into the uh, correction field inside the packet itself. And here's the end-to-end -end delay measurement. So in this type of uh, configuration, uh, all the messages are passed through the transparent clock. And if you would have a multiple transparent clock in the path, 
then all residency times are accumulated and all are summed up in the uh, in the uh, correction field. The second possible uh, configuration is called peer-to-peer -peer, uh, delay measurement. In uh, this configuration, only sync and follow-up messages are forwarded. And for each separate uh, connection, each separate PTP link, we have uh, a delay request and then delay response. So each link has its own delay and then they are uh, added in the correction field. So here you can see uh, more generic uh, equations for offset and for delay that is used in the protocol. Moving on to implementation details, you can uh, check all the source code in pull request linked in the presentation and some key points for the implementation. It is built on top of PSD sockets, uh, timestamps are passed uh, through control messages, uh, the implementation has been tested with Linux machine that was running PTP for uh, Linux. Uh, also, I was using uh, Wireshark for some debugging purposes and I highly encourage everyone to check out a demo made by Benjamin. Uh, uh, you can find it on YouTube. So, in the uh, title I put the implementation, so I just uh, put some code snippets uh, to the presentation just to uh, have something. So here's the uh, API for a PTP clock. It's a separated driver. It's quite small, but that's enough for uh, clock synchronization. And for more interesting parts, here's the uh, snippet of the uh, polling socket. So I've used, uh, apart from using sockets for, for uh, messages, I also used the uh, a file descriptor for a time start, uh, for timeouts that are used uh, inside the algorithm and everything can be uh, pulled in one uh, function. Uh, moving to some timer handler, here are some atomic bit mask for all possible timeouts that can occur in the, uh, in the protocol. Uh, and here is the way how the timestamps are retrieved from the uh, packets. So what are the next steps for the uh, protocol? I would like to add some missing transport protocols, uh, add support for multicast messages to reduce uh, messages forwarded between all the nodes and then uh, add some runtime configuration stored in non-volatile memory uh, and anything else that will claim up to my mind. So thank you everyone. Are there any questions? So uh, PTP uh, supports some runtime configuration uh, that is uh, message to denote by uh, management uh, messages and uh, they can change, for example, parameters that are used in a uh, decision uh, algorithm, and they can be stored then inside the non-volatile memory. Yes, please. Uh, do you play with uh, TPS kernel? No, I didn't, but the uh, PTP clock is using different clock than the one used in the a kernel itself. The clock is, uh, I think in all cases, it is coupled with the Ethernet or with CAN. And currently there is only uh, all the implementation for PTP clock are for Ethernet uh, hardware. Uh, but delays between uh, packets are not that important because you have hardware timestamping. So 
all the time stop are measured by the clock inside the Ethernet. So there is, it doesn't matter uh, what is the delay between receiving a packet and, uh, and uh, taking care of that. Please go ahead. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, there was no hard uh, constraints about the, uh, about the devices that uh, will work with uh, that protocol when I work on that. Yes? Uh, so there is uh, there are boards in Zephyr that uh, support PTP in CAN, but there is no implementation for PTP clock uh, for CAN hardware, and there is no uh, protocol support in PTP itself in the implementation. Thank you very much.